Now, you might have heard about vitamins and minerals and how they are absolutely essential. And in this video, we will be covering vitamins and minerals, and you will be able to see just the importance of vitamins and minerals. And not only that, why actually plants may not be the best option, especially not just for vitamin C, but also for vitamin E. Now, that might sound very, very strange because you might say, what? Plants are supposed to be higher in vitamin C and vitamin E, so that makes them healthier, right? Well, let's look a little bit closer and understand vitamin and mineral interactions in order to see why this is kind of not actually true at all. First, let's start off with one common myth about vitamins and minerals, specifically how meat doesn't have vitamin C in it. Well, this simply isn't true. And as you can see, every single part of meat does seem to have vitamin C in it. In fact, the part, the skeletal muscle, the one that are, is found, for instance, in filet mignon, it could be found in burgers, it could even be found in steaks, it could be found in chuck roasts. There are plenty and plenty of examples. And yes, all of that actually does contain vitamin C, as you can see. So that statement on meat not containing vitamin C is actually not true. Second myth is about vitamin C and glucose. Now vitamin C actually competes with glucose for the same transporter. And that's a big deal because that means if that you have higher amounts of glucose, you are actually going to have lower levels of vitamin C. And that isn't what you want because even if you're pounding down all of this vitamin C from vitamin C supplements, you're absorbing none of it because none of it is actually being able to be absorbed because you have such high levels of glucose. The third myth about vitamin C is, well, you know, you can just get your necessary vitamin C from fruits. Well, no, actually, because once again, remember how glucose actually competes with the same transporter than vitamin C? Well, yes, exactly. Increasing the glucose content, which is naturally found in fruit, will also compete for the vitamin C. And that isn't healthy because that means you're actually getting less vitamin C out of that fruit that you might think that you're getting when you're actually getting none of it. So very, very interesting on that one. Now we're gonna have to understand vitamin and mineral interactions. Now there are plenty, and I mean plenty, of vitamin and mineral interactions. And if I were to go over every single one of them, then this video would be an entire hour, maybe even five hours long because it is so long. As you can see, every single vitamin and mineral does interact with each other one way or another, and they either increase the absorption or even quite literally decrease the absorption of one another. And this isn't just applying to vitamin C that I've talked about before, this applies to every single one. Of them. So our first vitamin and mineral interaction will be vitamin C and B12. Now vitamin C actually degrades B12 and B12, as you might already know, actually only comes from animal sources. And this is kind of a big deal because that means if you're mixing in that fruit with that steak and eggs, then you're actually getting less vitamin C as well as getting less B12, which is not what you want to do. The second vitamin and mineral interaction we will be going over is vitamin E. Now, we already know that vitamin E actually hinders vitamin K1 absorption. Now, vitamin E is very, very predominantly found in plants, and not only that, K1 is as well found predominantly in plants. So even when you are eating that vitamin E and getting that vitamin E from plants, it is actually hindering the K1 that you're getting from the plants as well, meaning you're getting less K1, and that isn't helpful because that's lowering your K1, and K1 K1 is already very, very not bioavailable. It's very low, very, very low bioavailability. The second thing about vitamin E is vitamin E actually interferes with iron metabolism. Now, this is a really big deal because eventually we're gonna be covering why vegans are pretty much usually anemic. And this has to do with the fact that they aren't getting enough iron because they quite literally cannot even absorb the iron. And this has to do with the fact that every single one of these phytotoxins, as well as the vitamin and mineral content of plants, all do seem to target iron and they prevent iron absorption. The third vitamin and mineral interaction about vitamin E is that it competes with vitamin A. Now, vitamin A is very, very important, and you can find it in things like beta carotene in plants, or you can find it in retinol, otherwise in animals. Now, the thing is, beta carotene is very, very low bioavailability, and we're gonna be covering that, and as well as retinol being much, much higher. And if we keep compounding these effects over and over and over again, we will realize very, very quickly that we are actually malnutritioning ourselves and giving ourselves almost no nutrients whatsoever that we need, both vitamins and minerals, every single time we eat more and more plants. 
Now there are certain fat soluble vitamins which are absolutely required to be in some sort of a solution which is more so oil and if they aren't then they can't even be absorbed and these vitamins could be vitamins A, D, E or K and if they aren't in an oil solution once again they can't be absorbed that well. Now, B vitamins are actually very important, and as you can see, they are predominantly found in animal foods, and they are lacking in plant foods. Specifically, vitamin B12 is completely lacking in plant foods, and this is a big deal because you'll get a B12 deficiency basically from going vegan unless you supplement in some way or another, or you eat a very specific mushroom. Now we've covered the vitamin interactions, we will be going over the mineral interactions. The other interesting thing is that calcium actually inhibits non-heme iron as well, and that non-heme iron can be found in plants. Once again, very, very important because if you need enough calcium, well, you actually won't get it from plants because the non-heme iron from plants will bind to that calcium, meaning that you will get less non-heme iron and less calcium and that's not what you want because you need those nutrients and you need them really, really badly. Now, once again, iron is the most bioavailable in animals and the bioavailability of iron is around 15 to 35%. It is extraordinarily higher than that found in uh, plants. And this is because plants don't have the same kind of iron. They have non-heme iron, which is only a bioavailability of five to 20%, meaning you're only actually absorbing five to 20% in comparison to the animals, which is 15 to 35%. Now, iron is a little bit unique because phytates, specifically the plant phytotoxin, does seem to, for some reason, love targeting iron and making vegans anemic. And this is exactly how it does it. It basically will target the iron. It will prevent the iron from being absorbed by forming a little complex around it. And lo and behold, you got some problems because you can't even absorb that iron. Now, not only that, iron does compete with zinc as well, which is the next vitamin and mineral interaction. That's a really big one because already plants have very low levels of zinc and very low levels of iron. So when you add zinc and iron, they will only compete for each other and you won't even be able to absorb all of them. And this is not helpful. This is very, very damaging because you're not getting enough zinc and you're not getting enough iron. Now you might ask, well, okay, if this is the case, then where can I get all of these vitamins and minerals that I need in adequate amounts, not to the point where they're constantly dysregulating each other and there's just too much of one and not enough of the other. Well, this is where we come to the analogy and understanding all of this from an analogy in order to simplify things a bit more. Now imagine your body as this sort of exclusive nightclub and there are guests trying to get in. Now the animal based nutrients are VIPs with guaranteed entry and prime spots at every single bar and this basically is like easy absorption. The plant nutrients are just regular guests who often face challenges. Now the bouncer might say, basically your digestive system in this case is the bouncer, might say, you know what, I'm not letting you in and is a little bit picky about letting them in. But once inside, they might find that their usual spot that they used to like is actually taken by somebody else, which is otherwise known as nutrient competition. Now some of these regular guests also do cause trouble and they get kicked out. For instance, those are the anti-nutrients. And then there are others that just sneak in as imposters, basically the less bioavailable forms, even though they don't quite fit in. Now, just like a nightclub owner wants a smooth, running, enjoyable environment, your body prefers easily acceptable, non-competitive nutrients for optimal health. And because of this, animal-based nutrition is the VIP experience that you can give for your body. Hopefully in this video, you learned about vitamin and mineral interactions and how they are very, very abundant in animals as well as in good quantities or much so more even quantities and not constantly inhibiting each other. And in plants, they will constantly cause problems like lack of iron absorption and zinc absorption, which does lead to many, many vegans being anemic. So the key takeaways for this are one, vitamins and minerals do inhibit each other and they will compete for absorption, which is a very, very big deal. Two, iron absorption from plants actually is much, much less. And for some reason or another, vegans do seem to go anemic because they can't get enough iron and as well as a couple other minerals like zinc, which are absolutely essential and beta carotene, vitamin A. Three, if you need enough of any sort of B vitamin, then they are predominantly found in meat in always the highest quantity. So once again, that is where you can get highest amounts of vitamin B. Four, 
Plants have phytotoxins and these phytotoxins will do one thing or another. They will do anything that they possibly can to protect themselves from being eaten. And this includes preventing nutrients from being absorbed. Five, unlike what you might have heard, vitamin C actually is found in meat and you can get enough vitamin C from meat. If you found this video interesting, then I recommend you check out my video on protein because protein is actually very, very important and understanding amino acids as well and why plants don't actually have enough protein and what exactly is protein in the first place. Now that covers that in a lot more detail as well as a little bit of what exactly is muscle building and how does that work. Now, if you're interested in more videos like this, then please click the join button down below where you can see all my videos ahead of time. And once again, thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below because it does help the channel grow. So once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.